That complexity, raised of gender-based violence, demands a holistic approach. It isn't just closure for the victims or their families, but the rights of others to be protected as well. Morally and legally, questions have been pushed, and a stand is now being taken. PNG Menup, the advocacy group in a recent event hosted by FinCorp employees, have vowed to work together to take a proactive stance. Pledge. My challenge is to all of the other organisations out there um, that should be uh, contacting Man Up and also committing to taking the pledge. If we can do it, everybody can do it. FinCorp's Chief Asset Management Officer Adam Hughes, who is part of the group that founded PNG Man Up, made a call to other organisations to join the cause, take the pledge and stand up for change in the laws. And former Chief Migration Officer Solomon Kanta who is the chairman of Man Up, is one of those pushing for tougher penalties for GBV offenders. It's time that men in every um, uh, sectors in our uh, economy, in our country, in, in businesses, uh, in, in government departments, take a stand uh, against domestic violence because uh, gender-based violence is always seen as a, a women's issue. It's time that we men uh, stand up together, uh, step up and take action, not only in the workplace, uh, but in our homes as well, to protect our women and girls or to treat our women and girls um, the way we should treat them. And the PNG Women's Law Society is working on reviewing the 2016 to 2025 Papua New Guinea to prevent and respond to gender-based violence policy which incidentally has already been endorsed by the National Executive Council. Both co-vice presidents of the association in a meeting with MTV said work on providing better access to help is now being done. Avia Koisen says that laws are in existence to cater for cases of abuse. What needs to be strengthened is its enforcement. We've all been given a copy of this this uh, GBV strategy, and we've all gone through it, and mm. and it's um, it's all there. Yeah, the I think there's an ecosystem. The, yeah, there's a system that's already correct. created um, uh, since 1975, mm. since independence since up until worked. now. Mm. What we need to do is strengthen it and make it work. You've got you've got um, CEDAW, you've got the national goals and directive principles under the constitution. Um, you've got supporting legislation, you've got policies such as PNG Vision 2050, and then the um, long-term development plan, mm. which all support um, gender equality. Mm. And then you've got JESSE. Um, and then you've got the youth policy, you've got the health policy, yep. uh, you've got the gender equity policy in education itself, which is supposed to support the upbuilding of, of strengthening gender equality. But it seems like everything is in has not been connected. Mm. They're all it's it's in silos. Yeah. It's yeah. in silos. You've got policies there. You've got legislation. You've got um, government uh, initiatives. You've got the international um, conventions, but no one has and put them bring together. This all together. All together. And that's part of what we need yeah, to do. That's what we need to do. That sentiment supported wholeheartedly by her co-president Diane Aikung. We need evidence-based um, conversations and evidence-based intervention. Everybody knows that GBV is a, you know, it's a national concern. And um, it's fast decaying, you know, our society. So what do we need to do? But we need evidence-based um, conversations and intervention. There is also hope that PNG Women's Law Society can be able to partner with civil associations to finally petition legislators to make changes and amendments. The strength of the uh, civil society organizations that are now currently doing this is that they, they um, coexist that they support each other and there should be an, they sh that network should be strengthened because mm. right now I think it's isolated. Yeah. That's why, as you said, when a woman goes into House mm. Ruth mm. down at Ella Beach, she's not able to get any help otherwise from legal services. Why? There's a disconnect. Mm. Maybe, maybe there's, a, there's no connect between the fe Family Sexual Violence Unit and, and House Ruth. Um, on my way here, a friend from UNDP called and said, you know, this is a major concern. Um, we need the GBV secretariat um, up and running. 
well, the Women's um, Support Secretary. Mm -hmm. We need budgetary allocation for it from government. Um, that hasn't even started yet. And um, they also need to review the policy itself um, to see what will work and what won't work or what has worked and is working. Um, but for us as an association, we've also discussed legal aid as a, mm. a short-term um, initiative that we can get started. And individuals have also taken their initiative to address the issue of domestic and gender-based violence. Photographer Trevor Mullen, a relative newbie in the field, recently released confronting images that also had high traction. Simple yet powerful. Trevor Mullen's images on the aftermath of gender-based and domestic violence sending a far-reaching message to the masses. The photographer doing his part to raise awareness on the issue after myriad reports in mainstream media. We wanted to spread the awareness on gender-based violence. We wanted to tell people that it's real, it's here, these are the realities of it. And that piece that Leila Lee did, it was able to tell that story well. From a, from a victim's perspective. The issue of gender-based and domestic violence is slowly being addressed in various sectors of the society, reaching as high as the Prime Minister's office. Uh, gender-based violence, I know okay. it's, it's sensitive out there. <clears throat> uh, we have enough laws to go to the moon and come back. In violence, in murder, in abuses. NGOs, corporate bodies, as well as government and private businesses all publicly declaring their support for the protection of people against being abused. The statistics say two out of three women will experience family sexual violence, which equates to, according to my rough calculations, 2.3 million women in Papua New Guinea. So I guess why we started was 2.3 million men in our minds needed assistance to, to empower themselves and to overcome family sexual violence so that they can stop perpetrating. That, that, that's the crux of why we started. I think fundamentally when you go into any uh, GBV or family sexual violence training, um, at the center of any kind of violence is a, is a desire to control another person or persons. Um, underlying that, which may not be talked about uh, a lot, is why would someone try and control someone? It's, it's, because, it's because of fear. That's the emotion that's actually triggering off the desire to control. Because when you're scared, and most people, when we are faced with situations, whether they're relationships or external situations, where we feel we are unable to control that particular environment or circumstance. We, we resort to anything that we can to try and control it, whether it's verbal abuse or um, in some, and in some instances, uh, physical violence. If anything, raising the issue over and over again in the hopes of finally instilling some sense of responsibility is the target across the board. That education of the young is an important facet in addressing this dangerous trend.